Let's talk a little bit about the philosophy of filtration. Now, filtration is something that most industrial companies and most people who consume engine oils, for example, they recognize that filtration is important. But how do you set up a framework for understanding where you need to concentrate your efforts? Because realistically, you have limited time and you have limited budget. So where should you be directing your attention? Let's get into it. When we talk about filtration philosophy, what we really are talking about is the methods that we can use to filter out contaminants and where those contaminants come from. So contamination control can really be broken up into two components. You've got prevent and removal. So if I can prevent any contaminants from getting into my application in the first place, that's obviously ideal. But when they do get in, which is inevitable, then I want a method of removing them. I think that's pretty basic. Now, where do most of these contaminants come from? Well, there's a variety. I generally break them up into four categories, which we would call built-in, generated, and ingressed. And if we look at those four categories, what are the examples of contamination points? So for built-in, we're generally talking about contaminants that come when the product is shipped to us. So if I have a, a GE gas turbine, not picking them for any particular reason, but it could come with machining swarf in it. Maybe after manufacturing, they didn't do a flush of the system. And so there are metal particulates all throughout the system. Maybe there is some salt water. It's very common, particularly where I live in Australia, that all of these components are shipped by sea. So inevitably, there's going to be some kind of salt water contamination. And actually, to protect the equipment from this salt water contamination, usually there are rust preservatives inside the equipment. On top of that, we might have something called fretting corrosion debris. So if you're not familiar with fretting corrosion, I'll have to get into it in more detail in a separate video. But effectively, low level vibrations over a reasonable period of time can cause the formation of a type of corrosion, which is most commonly associated with things like ball bearings, right? So if you have a ball bearing sitting inside a race and it's just vibrating a little bit over a long period of time, there'll be some like a divot that forms underneath it and there'll be a buildup of oxides and that is the fretting corrosion debris. Now, in order to eliminate all of these different built-in uh, contaminants, realistically, what we're talking about is doing an adequate flush before putting something into service. That's the way that we're gonna get rid of all of these. Then we look at the generated contaminants, which is things like abrasive wear or erosion. So this is contaminants that are metal particles caused by using the gas turbine, right? Now, we can try and prevent these as much as possible by using uh, high quality lubricants at the correct viscosity with a really good anti-wear package, but some amount of abrasion and erosion is inevitable. And so we are gonna generate wear metal particles that are gonna circulate through our system. And as they do that, they actually get work hardened and it's this escalating effect where they start to create more and more wear particles. Then we've got sludge and varnish, which are more byproducts of the actual bulk oil system. So the bulk oil and the additives are consumed the oil oxidizes, it forms things like carboxylic acids, and initially those are soluble in the oil, but at some point they agglomerate together, they get large, they become insoluble, they fall out of solution, and they plate out in various surfaces. And that's generally not good because it can start to close clearances. So we wanna try and remove sludge and varnish. Then you've got something like added contaminants. This could be a variety of different things. Maybe it's someone putting the incorrect oil. Maybe it's water from drums which have breathed. So if I've done a video on this, but basically if you put drums out in, in the sun, as it heats up and cools down, it's able to pull moisture from the air through the bung, basically through the lid, and eventually you'll get water contamination into new. Then you've got dirt from dispensing containers. Most sites that I go to, housekeeping is not the best, and you'll see either dispensing containers where stuff hasn't been wiped down, or the lids are left open and dust just blows in. There's any number of ways that dirt can get in. Now, dirt seems relatively innocuous, right? You pick up dirt in your hand and it doesn't feel that bad. But in actual fact, silica in particular is, is a highly abrasive material and it can cause a lot of erosion uh, in your application. Then we've got ingress, which is things like rain, condensation, humidity, maybe it's washed down water, uh, processed gas leaks maybe, seal leaks, and condensation getting through the, the vents and the breathers. So this is what we would call ingressed contamination or basically environmental contamination. Now, if we, for one second, just to ignore uh, built-in contamination, because that's really a once-off, right? You, you get delivered the product, you flush all those built-in contaminants out, and then hopefully you don't have to deal with that ever again. But with ingressed generated and added, we can put together a bit of an equation, right? So basically you have ingressed and added contaminants that are going into your system. Then you have generated contaminants, which are created inside the system. And then you have to try and filter out those three categories of contaminants. So if we gave each of these a number in a, that, that's qualified in a, right, a, a number of particles per hour, th this gives us a bit of a formula for understanding how contamination happens 
and how much I'm going to need to filter out. So we've got x plus y plus z equals f, and this would represent a system that's equal in equilibrium. So I'm filtering out as many contaminants as I am producing or is entering the system. Now, if I am producing and uh, allowing more contaminants into the system than I'm filtering out, this represents a disequilibrium in which I am basically reducing the life expectancy of my asset because over time, the amount of contaminants is going to increase. And we know that contaminants cause things like abrasion and erosion, which reduces the life of your components, right? Now, the other way of thinking of this um, equation is that as you go from left to right, the remediation solutions get much more expensive. So in an ideal circumstance, we want to prevent contaminants from ever getting into the system. And that's the cheapest form of insurance because something like, for example, making sure the hatch is closed on the reservoir, that literally costs me nothing and yet is a highly effective solution. Putting, installing a, a desiccant breather and making sure that desiccant breather has not exceeded its use, right? Usually there'll be a color indicator indicating when it's become saturated. That is again, very cheap insurance for my oil system. Making sure that I wipe down the containers that I'm using to top up, again, very cheap insurance. So these are all very cheap and, and practical ways in which I, I can reduce the amount of contamination that comes into my system. Then there's slightly more expensive options, which is looking at the new oil that comes to site, maybe it's bulk oil, and trying to pre-filter it before it goes into my tanks, maybe using kidney loop filtration. But again, that's still cheaper than allowing those contaminants to get into my system, because once those contaminants are in my system, they're gonna produce wear particles. And now I have to reduce the contaminants and the wear particles. So that becomes more expensive to filter them out. And then of course, once I have wear particles and I'm generating more wear particles, that gets even more expensive. Now the wear particles, because they're metals, get into the bulk oil, they cause oxidation. Now I have a sludge and varnish problem. Sludge and varnish is much more expensive to filter out because it requires specialized filters, right? It's not just particle filters. We're now having to deal with things like a resin exchange filter. So as we go from left to right, the solutions are getting much more expensive. And so if we can do anything to prevent contaminants from getting into our system in the first place, that is going to be the cheapest solution and where I should really direct most of my efforts. So hopefully this has given you a bit of a framework to understand where contaminants come from and where I should be directing all my efforts.